Welcome to your Nevada Trucking Association podcast. I'm Paul Enos, CEO of the Nevada Trucking Association. And here for National Truck Driver Appreciation Week, I wanted to introduce all our folks, all of our members, if you don't already know them, to one of our former drivers of the year. This is Scott Bunn, drives for USF right away. Scott, thanks for coming in today. You're welcome. My I pleasure. Very much appreciate it. Now, I've met you, uh, I, well, I've met you at TDCs over the years, but then I was very honored. USF right away a couple years ago said, hey, we've got this driver. He hit 3 million miles. This is our first 3 million mile driver in our company's history right here in Sparks, Nevada. We want to recognize him. And so, I mean, it was, it was great to go down there. And I love anytime we get a driver who's able to do, you know, multi-million of miles accident free, driving doubles, driving triples, something we don't see in a lot of other states. So, I mean, that was, that was great. Now, Scott, talk, talk, to our, talk to our viewers about your career. You know, how, how did you start and uh, what have you learned? Well, I started when I was 16 in uh, McGill. Nevada, which where I was born and raised, and uh, basically hustling jobs, washing people's tractors. I, I always had an affinity for large motors. You know, everybody liked their hot rod cars and stuff. I liked 800 cubic inch engines. <laughs> and uh, so that's kind of what got me driving into the industry. And I just kind of took whatever I got. I was too young to get any good road jobs. You know, when you was 16, you had to be 18. When you was 18, you had to be 21. When you was 21, you had to be 23. <laughs> so I ended up with a lot of off-road type jobs, but I always had a job because I could actually drive a truck. And I think a lot of the farmers and people that I worked for at that point were a little amused at such a kid, you know, driving their trucks kind of made them feel good. And that kind of boosted me along. But And then uh, I finally got you know, into tankers and that went on for a while. And, and, uh, then I got in with, uh, with Redaway and I ended up staying at Redaway for 35 years where I'm currently employed now. Now, Scott, this year we had our truck driving championships in April down in Las Vegas. And, you know, there's people that you see compete every year that always do well or Former uh, Drivers of the Year, we gave you actually, you know, in Vegas, I think right. in 2015, you were awarded the Truck Driver of, Truck the, Driver year of the Year trophy. We did that surprise for you, and yeah. you had your mom and dad come up from White Pine County, or come down from White Pine County, <laughs> I forget our geography, to, uh, to, to see that happen. And this year, I'm going around and I'm talking to all the drivers that are, that are in the event, and there was a driver with USF right away who said, can you please give me an extra t-shirt for Scott? He wasn't able to come here because he hurt his back. So, I mean, I was kind of, I said, oh, that's too bad. So of course, you know, give him an extra t-shirt. So talk to us about how you hurt your back and kind of what came from that. Yeah, it's a, it's a real strange story. Uh, we were supposed to go to Atlanta and sharpen our skills at the Drive for a Cure to benefit pediatric brain cancer. And it was right before the TDCs in Nevada, so we decided to go. And uh, we ended up in February going up to uh, Mammoth. And Deb got, my wife got, uh, uh, had a little illness go on, and I ended up burning vacation days. So we decided maybe we better not go, save the vacation days for, you know, the TDCs and all that stuff. And... Uh, the day we were supposed to fly to Atlanta, it snowed in Reno like a, a half a foot in an hour. Just Part of that miracle march that we had. Miracle march, yeah. Well, I got so much snow, that heavy, wet Sierra cement snow under my windshield wipers, they wouldn't work. So I opened the hood on my truck, crawled up there, got the snow out from under there, broke my own work rules, stepped off the truck funny, and thought I sprained my lower back. So what do you mean your own your own work rules? I mean, what are well, the things that you tell that you tell drivers? Number one, I should have got a broom. Uh, number two, I should have got a ladder. I shouldn't have climbed up on the tire to start with. Uh, these are things that I've, I've always preached to other people not to do unsafe acts. And when you're doing something like that, don't let muscle memory take over. Make a decision before you step down. Think about it just a little bit. Look where you're stepping, et cetera. And I was in such a hurry that I broke my own rules. 
but it, I didn't really fall off the truck. I just stepped down, and it was you know it wasn't a, a hard step or anything, but something let go in my back. And at 58 years old, stepping off a truck, the common thing is is lower lumbar sprain. It just happens all the time. That's why getting in and out of the truck is such an important thing and an important part of the rules for the TDCs. If you don't use three points of contact, you're disqualified. Getting in and out of the truck and they watch it like a hawk is so important because so many drivers get hurt that way. It was hard for me and embarrassing to imagine that I hurt myself in that fashion. Well, it ended up that it didn't get better and I was unable to attend the TDCs, which was another embarrassment for me. And then when they finally uh, got the correct diagnosis, it turned out that somebody had helped me off that truck to find out that I had cancer in my spine. And the funny thing is, is when I first found out, my first reaction was that I was relieved that I didn't hurt myself in a stupid fashion <laughs> and embarrass myself. But uh, um, the whole thing just turned out to be like a miracle because the type of cancer that I have, they usually don't find until it's way late in the late stages. And uh, it just ravishes your body before you, you find out you have it. And to catch it this early in this fashion, I mean, trucks my whole life have been my whole life. And I look at it like my truck just saved my life again. You know, it's built my quality of life. It's gave us all the good things that we have in life. and and now it's given me life. So, I mean, I owe everything to trucks, to now, be honest. Scott, you've, uh, you've been going to chemo. You've been going down to Arizona. Yep. And what's the, what's the prognosis? The prognosis is good. Um, we, uh, the, first, the first poll, everything's kind of experimental where we're at. Um, they have a good program. We're at the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, which I gotta give props to. They are a fantastic facility full of incredible people. And uh, the, the, first, the first poll after we decided what path to take in treatment, my cancer rate was down over 75% in a matter of a week, couple of weeks. And this, uh, this last poll, this last check, it was down, it was from 14,000 uh, parts per whatever they, figure that out to below 600. So we're, we're right now trying to do a knockout punch and hopefully within the next month I'll be cancer free. Right, that's phenomenal and that's fantastic. And early detection, you know, something that they usually usually don't catch yeah. except for this. Early detection is so important. You, you got to know your body. I, I think I could have caught it earlier if I would have just recognized more symptoms. I, I've been having a sore hip for a while I blamed it on a 58-year-old arthritis truck driver and, and just let it go from there. It didn't really, I, I think it might not have been arthritis at this point. Scott, so, is there any, any advice you have to, you know, folks in our industry who, you know, you're right, for a truck driver, you know, it's not always easy to go out and get the kind of exercise that you need. And, you know, it is fairly sedentary at times. It's, it's really tough. And and uh, it's, it's tough to stay healthy. We eat fast food from gas stations and we're always under a deadline, especially with the ELDs at this point. You know, we got that, that uh, boss looking right straight at you all, all the time. You gotta eat quick, get it done. And we are sedentary day after day, year after year, and those things go by fast. All of a sudden, um, your health starts to deteriorate. And for us in our industry, that shoe is more likely to drop than probably a lot of other industries just because of the sedentary lifestyle and the stresses we go through on a daily basis. And I really, the biggest thing that I can tell you right now is if you work for a company, most of them have programs that protect your income, um, hospital indemnity programs, things like that that are, are relatively inexpensive. And they protect your income when you have a critical illness that's gonna take a while to get cured from that you may be out of work. This protection, when they put money in your bank, then you don't have to worry about your mortgage and your car payments and your food on your table. It allows you to focus on healing. 
And they're, the, all the ones that I've looked at so far have been just extremely affordable. I, I implore everyone to look into it. It's, it's something that in this day and age we have to have. You don't want to go through something like this and then have to go through bankruptcy too. And, and it's just really, most, for the most part, unnecessary. So, I mean, that's fantastic that that was something, you know, planning ahead, you know, the things that you're always preaching to drivers, you know, about when they get in their truck and when they get on the road, you know, to, to plan ahead. You know, the fact Absolutely. that, you know, you're looking down the future to, you know, see you, you know, in your, your old age and, you know, potentially those things that we never anticipate happening, happening and to be prepared for that. And I think that's one of the reasons, Scott, why, you know, you are the pro that you are, why well, you've had, how many, how many millions of miles today without an accident? Um, altogether, lifetime, I've got to be approaching four and a half, four and three quarter million miles. So, think. and at least, you know, over three of those, three million of those miles with, uh, with right away. USF, with USF right away. And Scott, how have they been in, you know, in Right away you? is an unbelievable company. Um, they have supported me throughout, uh, They've given me a lot of extra responsibility, training drivers, teaching guys how to work safe, um, developing a training program as, as uh, the environment that we truck through these days gets more litigious. We have to have programs that, that take care of, of uh, documented training and making sure that people know they need to do the right thing. You can't just trust everybody to know that anymore. And uh, they recognize your deeds. They, they have been so supportive through this battle I'm fighting with cancer right now that from the top to the bottom, I mean, clear up through YRC. They, uh, and right away, I mean, they, they call on a daily basis, the officers of the company. I mean, they really, you do not feel like a number at right away. You are, you are somebody. You really are. And Scott, what do you want to do after you beat after you beat this? Um, after I beat this, I want to take the experience that I've had over the last forty years and share it with with the new drivers that are coming on. I, I think there's there's nothing more important than if you don't share the experience, you waste your life, and it can all be passed on. And you never really know what sticks to a guy that might save his or somebody else's life through training. Just that one little thing that, that makes him make the right move that, that avoids catastrophe. Is, and you never really know that, but you always really know that. And training becomes extremely real. It did for me when one of the drivers that I trained died in a horrific, fiery truck crash then you know how important all this stuff really is. And it really is. Well, hey, Scott, I just want to say thank you for coming in here and sharing this experience you know, with us, for, for all of our folks out there. And then I, I want to say thank you to you, to all of our other professional truck drivers out there. We appreciate everything you do on a daily basis, the time you take away from your family, the stress that is out there on our, on our roads and highways, just to make sure that all of us get all of those things that, that we need, you know, from our gasoline to our diesel fuel to our food, our water, our electronics, our phones. Just want to say thank you. We appreciate you. And Scott, thank you for taking thank the you, time Paul. to do this. Appreciate it. Everybody have a great week. Safe travels. Thank you.